first of all, we'll talk about who is affected by prednisone side effects. Next, we'll talk about what you can actually expect if you're taking prednisone, as far as how it's going to affect your personality and your mood. And finally, we'll talk about how you can cope with it. You'll notice the references there. I based all of this on evidence that is published in the medical literature. These are two reviews of medical literature that I'm going to summarize and simplify for you today. First of all, this quote is directly from one of those articles. It says, educating patients about possible need side effects and the need to report them is essential. And I couldn't agree more. That really is my goal as a prednisone pharmacist, to educate people about prednisone and how it is bothering them and what they can actually do about it. In that same article, they told this story, and I just wanted to share it with you really quick. It says, three days after starting high-dose prednisone, a patient, a 50-year-old married white woman, began experiencing depression, intense fatigue, malaise, weight gain, and swelling of her lower extremities. She felt higher than a kite. She was unable to sleep, lacked impulse control, and was inappropriately humorous. That would have been interesting. Her mind was flooded with unrelated thoughts. And her thinking became so disorganized, she couldn't even drive. She had memory problems and required multiple reminders, including pinning it to her clothes so that she wouldn't forget her responsibilities and appointments. Her doctor had told her, you might become hyperactive, but she was not prepared for the magnitude and extent of the changes she experienced during her taking prednisone, nor for when she had to go back, at a go back on prednisone again later, what kind of depression she would have during the first taper period and in other treatment cycles. When her depression became so bad, she sought help from a psychiatrist. She, even after stopping prednisone, she continues to report memory problems, some loss of cognitive clarity, and vulnerability to overreacting to stress. Does any of that sound familiar to you? It sure does to me. For me, my personal experience was my doctor in the hospital said, all right, you're a pharmacist. You know this drug is probably going to cause insomnia. You choose which medicine you want us to give you for your insomnia. Okay, cool. <laughs> so they let me prescribe my own, basically, with his signature. Well, let's learn about when does this happen. So... Is it in your head? Are you going crazy or is it the drug? That's the question we're answering. And if you follow what I'm about to explain, you'll find the answer. First of all, more than half of people who take prednisone report a mood condition. We'll explain more about what those are later. For people taking prednisone, they're there's a lifetime risk of 60% chance that you'll have a mood or anxiety disorder while taking prednisone. For serious side effects, 15.7 um, out of 100 person years. So if one person takes a medicine for one year, that's one person year. So 15 of those out of 100 will have serious, severe depression or even possibly commit suicide with a 5.7% chance um, of having severe side effects. And how many people are even taking prednisone anyway? Well, there's a lot of confusion about it. The lowest estimate is that 0.9%. We'll just round that up to say 1% of the population of the United States of America is taking prednisone at any time. And in 2018, it was the 31st most commonly prescribed drug behind thyroid medicines and blood pressure medicines and a few antibiotics. It was number 31. 
there were 23.2 million prescriptions in 2018. And how bad is it anyway? Well, 7% of people taking prednisone are hospitalized for psychiatric side effects. And how many people could possibly be affected by psychiatric side effects? Well, the range could be 1.8% to 57%. That's how broad it could be in the literature. Or maybe 13 to 62%. But let's just settle on 27%. That's the middle most best estimate. So the real answer here is this drug causes serious psychiatric side effects that you need to be aware of so that you can have a plan to deal with it. What side effects are they? So we'll start on the left. First of all is mood lability. Now what in the world does that mean? So to have a labile mood It means that you jump way more quickly between moods than is normal for you or for most people. Basically, you are more likely to be happy and then suddenly be in tears or to be enjoying time with your children and then suddenly screaming at them or to be just peacefully driving down the freeway and then suddenly about ready to cut somebody off or something worse. (laughs) So that's a fairly common side effect. Then there's anxiety, which is restlessness or worry or fear and agitation. Insomnia can be related to that, and it's characterized by restlessness, waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to fall asleep because your mind is racing. And then depression. So you'll see that little down arrow. They call this a negative symptom. And basically you are lacking in energy. You're tired or maybe you're not tired. Maybe you're, you just can't sleep. Um, the very most extreme of this is suicidal and it is more, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Then there's memory impairments. So Even though you're young taking prednisone, you might feel like, do I have Alzheimer's disease? Am I forgetting everything already? Do I have dementia? Um, You might be distracting, so you won't be able to focus and complete a task as well as you normally could. And maybe even be confused and disoriented, not sure where you are. The next one is mania. So mania can range from something as simple as euphoria, just feeling really good and having extra energy, to hypomania when you might not even need sleep because there's so much pressure to just do and um, you might be more irritable. And then pressured speech, which I've got to talk really fast. I've got to just talk, 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 get it out. And you're not normally a talkative person, but it's just got to come. And it comes really fast. Then psychosis. This is the most extreme and the most rare. It's not very likely that this will happen, but it does. They used to call it steroid psychosis because prednisone is a steroid and it's characterized by delirium. Like, where am I? What's going on? Um, Hallucinations, seeing things that aren't there, disorganized thoughts, like jumping from topic to topic And it doesn't make any sense why you're talking about one thing and then the next thing. And delusions, like thinking you're the president of the United States or something. So these are all possibilities when you're taking prednisone. So when do they happen? And this isn't true for everyone. This is just a huge generalization of what could possibly happen in the medical literature. So first you take the prednisone and at the beginning, it's more likely that you'll feel that euphoria and extra energy and maybe even mania, all those positive symptoms. And then as time goes by, you might get anxiety or insomnia. And later on, when you've been taking it a while, it's more likely to have depression and the mood lability could really be any time. 
And when it's extreme, it could be psychosis and memory impairment. And finally, you could be suicidal. And I want to be really sensitive here. It's extremely, extremely rare. Only 0.03% of people who are on prednisone commit suicide. So don't get any ideas. You're worth it. It's worth fighting for whatever you're going through. Prednisone is miserable and awful, but there's a way to cope with it. So please preserve your life. This is really important. And I'm your advocate. Just message me on this page and I'll help you get through it. There are suicide hotlines you are worth fighting for. I know it's easy to forget when the prednisone is making you feel different, but it's worth it. Okay, so back to that timing. You might be thinking, oh, I'm not going to experience depression until I've been on it a long time. No. That's not, po- that's not necessarily true. Or I'll only have euphoria at the beginning. It's possible, but not necessarily true either. So basically, prednisone side effects that are in the psychiatric realm can happen at any time. They could happen immediately. They could happen while you're taking it for a long time. Or they could even happen when you've stopped taking it. So... They did an experiment and to find out when people started feeling their mood change, their personality change, any complication in how they feel. And they found that 39% of people experienced some sort of a side effect within one week of starting prednisone. 62% of them within two weeks. And 83% of people who were going to experience a side effect that was from prednisone in affecting their psychiatric health, mental health, was within six weeks. The average median was 11.5 days. So it's likely if you're going to have it, that it's going to happen pretty quickly. But it might not happen until you completely stop taking it. Then another study, um, they showed that it people, ex- most people, people experienced their prednisone side effect within one week. So I can attest to that. I felt high as a kite like that woman. I had all this energy and that was all at the beginning. And then I took um, prednisone for a really long time and I had insomnia and it was awful. And so... (laughs) That is one of the reasons I've become the prednisone pharmacist, to help other people cope with that. What, like, can we predict who gets prednisone psychiatric side effects? Nope. (laughs) They used to say that, oh, people who get side effects from prednisone that affect their mental health, it was just an exaggeration of their previous personality and mental health. And that's not true. That is not at true at all. The truth is you cannot predict it. Just because somebody might have depression before prednisone doesn't mean that it's going to get worse or change at all while in prednisone. Just because somebody has no mental illness before prednisone doesn't mean that they won't get it while on prednisone. There's no way to predict it. So even the dose doesn't predict it. You can't say, oh, well, you're on super high dose prednisone for a short time. Of course, you're going to get side effects. You might not. You might be the lucky person who doesn't. We don't know. So then what about the dose? I said it's not predictive, but it is a risk factor. So you're more likely, but we can't predict who it will be. So let's talk about it. So a normal and I'm not going to say low dose, but on this study it was low dose, less than 40 milligrams, 1% of the people had prednisone psychiatric side effects. Low dose is really like less than 7.5 milligrams. People who are on a high dose, which was more than 40 milligrams and less than 80 milligrams, 4.6% of people had a severe um, psychiatric side effect. And then at super high dose, we're talking 80 milligrams or more, 
18.4% of people had a psychiatric side effect and a severe one at that. So while you can't predict it, you are more likely to have a side effect the higher your dose. Now, what about gender? Is that predictive? Well, they found that it's more likely as a woman that you will experience a depressive side effect and men are more likely to have mania or delirium. Then what about the type of medicine? So prednisone is a corticosteroid and there are a bunch of corticosteroids. Another one is dexamethasone and that one's long acting. I was actually put on that one as well for very short period of time and an extremely high dose. And um, I, I really did feel depressed for the first time in my life. For like a week, I was just like, I can't get off the couch. I have no emotions. I am just depressed. And it was so weird. I'd never felt anything like it in my life. And then they got me on prednisone after that super, super, super high dose dexamethasone failed. Like I was taking 10 pills at once. 10 of the highest strength pills. So um, the long acting is more likely to cause depression than short acting. And what is short acting? Things like hydrocortisone. Okay, so what about age? So children who have to take prednisone, about 50% of them have a behavioral change and they're more likely to have um, memory impairment as are the elderly. Then what about people in their middle age? So if they're if people are 18 to 30 years old, they're the most likely to get a panic disorder side effect. And the middle aged people, 18 to 50, are the most likely to be suicidal and um, actually commit suicide, which is the same in the rest of the population as well. That's the most likely population that commits suicide in general, that age group. Finally, when prednisone is given to the elderly, especially those older than 80 years old, they're more likely to really get dementia and delirium and confusion and disorientation just to have it really impact them and make them suddenly go from okay to acting old. So um, these are things to consider when your doctor is prescribing prednisone to see, well, what's the most likely thing that might happen? Since we can't predict who is going to have these side effects, there's no evidence that any of those things predicts it, then this message is for all doctors and for all of you to share with your doctors. This is straight from one of those articles. This is, these are their words, not mine. They said, because we cannot predict, all patients should be considered at risk. So it's okay. You are just fine if you are experiencing these side effects because all patients are considered at risk and should be monitored. So everyone who is being treated everyone going through withdrawal from prednisone and for some time afterward, it can cause side effects to your mental health. And the doctor and you, and if you're a caregiver, you should look for changes in your mood, in the memory, thinking abilities, and behavior. And if you do, then you're more likely to be able to catch it before it's too late so that you can make an impact. And next week, we'll talk about coping strategies based on evidence, what you can do to fight back against these side effects, what um, methods and medications have been shown to be helpful for people on prednisone. And a year ago, I was trying to take a nap, but because I was completely exhausted, because prednisone had given me insomnia and I still couldn't even take a nap because my mind was revved with that like not quite anxiety but just buzz like this constant buzz couldn't relax couldn't settle down my personality was different than I normally was and I had this all going through my head and I thought people need help what can I possibly do to help what can I do 
to prevent this from happening to me? How can I deal with these side effects? And I had this bolt of lightning flash into my brain and it said, you need to create a dietary supplement for people on prednisone. You need to fight back against those consequences, how miserable it is. And so I created Nutrinize Zone. It gives back the nutrients that prednisone is stealing. It has ingredients in it to help calm your mood, to help you get restful sleep. I selfishly created it for myself so that when I go on prednisone, I have a way to fight back. But I made enough to share so that you can get a hold of it yourself and you can fight back. You can go to Nutrinize.com and that's where you can buy it. And if you're not ready to buy it, please go to my page um, and it's facebook.com slash Nutrinize and like my page so that you can find out more about Nutrinize Zone and hear about upcoming events and promotions that we've got going on. I am so excited to share this with you because it is like a fulfillment of a dream to be able to say, look, I created this and I created it for you because I know it helps. So check it out at Nutrinize.com. Signing off as your prednisone pharmacist.